What is ARR? What is EBITDA? What is margin? Hi, my name is Gillian Sheeran. I'm a CFO and I qualified as a Chartered Accountant in 2005. I've been operating at C-suite level for over 10 years. What is this video about? In this video, I'm going to cover revenue, subscription revenue, ARR, EBITDA, gross profit, gross margin, and the differences between those. In the next video, I'm gonna go through some more advanced SaaS metrics, like LTV to CAC, CAC payback, and um, customer acquisition costs, magic number. Now, what is ARR? ARR stands for Annual Recurring Revenues. These are revenues that recur on an annual basis. So for example, with Microsoft, we sign a contract that says that that contract will automatically recur, i.e. it will automatically renew. We have to ring up Microsoft and cancel it ourselves to stop it. So in finance, at the end of each month, we look at our revenues, but we also look at our annual recurring revenues. Why do we do this? We do it because of that spread of revenues I mentioned earlier. So in our Microsoft example, say we've come to June. So we have taken to our books, we've taken six months of 10. The contract was 120, each month we're taking 10. So by June, we've got six months, we've got $60 in our accounts. But our customer book, our contract is worth 120. And so we look at those two things separately because it gives us a better idea of the value. Very importantly, ARR is not part of the P&L or the financial statements. We classify ARR in different terms. We look at gross ARR and net ARR. Gross ARR is the new clients we've signed on in that period plus our expansion ARR. What's expansion ARR? So if we go back to that Microsoft example, halfway through the year, we ring up Microsoft, we say, we want access to PowerPoint or some, uh, el something else. They say, that's fine, but it's now gonna ch cost you 150 on an annual basis, $150. So the expansion ARR is the 150 less the 120. Net ARR is our gross ARR minus our churn and our contraction. Churn is where we've lost a client, unfortunately, and contraction is where the opposite to expansion has occurred, so the, the full amount has just reduced. We also take into account foreign exchange variances, and that gives us our net new ARR. What is EBITDA? EBITDA stands for Earnings Before Interest, Tax, Depreciation and Amortization. It's a measure of profitability. Essentially, you take your revenues, you minus your costs, and you get EBITDA. But you minus a specific type of cost, you minus your controllable and um, direct and indirect costs. So for example, if you're selling cakes, you're selling cakes and your direct costs are your flour and your sugar. You sell more cakes, you need more flour and sugar. If you're selling laptops, you need components like chips and screens and buttons. You sell less laptops, you don't need so many chips and screens and buttons. As you travel down the P&L, the costs become less controllable and less variable and direct. And at the very, very bottom of the P&L exists interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. They are very difficult to control. Other than moving money between accounts or doing something very snazzy with your tax strategy, the average manager in a business can't control them. And it would be very unfair for us to target somebody on something that they cannot control. And so that's why we, we take them out. We say, we will target you on earnings before the interest tax depreciation and amortization. So what is margin? People often confuse profit and margin. Profit is an absolute number. If I sell $100 worth of something and the cost were $30, my profit is $70. The actual cash I have in the bank now is $70. However, your margin is your profit expressed as a percentage of your revenue. So you take that profit of 70, you divide it by 100, and it just happens that you also get 70% in this example. However, the tricky bit is, if you were to increase your revenues, say let's double them. So you increase your revenues by 200, these are directly relatable costs. This is your flour and your sugar, so your costs go up, they double. 
So now you've 200 in revenues, you've 60 in costs, and your profit is 140. Your margin is 140 divided by 200, which is 70%. You've doubled your profit in absolute terms, but your margin is static. And that's why it's so, so important. And we focus on it so much because it's so difficult to move that number. And it's also why pricing is so important. Because let's imagine that you could double your revenues but, and keep your volume the same. Your costs would be the same. So your revenues go from 100 to 200, your costs stick at 30. You now have 170 profit and your margin has shot right up to 85%. There is also a very interesting video by my colleague, Tim Shorter, which elaborates more on this topic. It's called The Power of 1%. Hopefully you found this information useful. This information is going to help you as we cover more advanced, sophisticated SaaS metrics in the next video. We have an article called How to Grow Your Business Without Cutting Expenses. If that's something that interests you, please check it out on our Learning Center. If you have anything to add i'd be delighted to have a discussion so please leave a comment after this video like and subscribe if you want more information now happy pricing <laughs>